Hello, everybody. This is Northern Lion, a.k.a. Ryan, I suppose. Maybe this should be in the other order. Uh, and I'm here because, basically, I don't have any idea what the game I'm... What the, this is live and unedited, if you couldn't tell. What the game I'm going to use for my next Let's Play is. So while I ruminate on that and try to come up with a good idea, I'm going to do a little bit of a throwback series here. I'm going to make some Let's Hates. If you're unfamiliar with the Let's Hate series, it didn't last too, too long, actually. Just Virtual Bart. It's a game where I go back and play some retro games from my childhood that, uh, you know, just for whatever reason, are not very good. But they're very good, they're not very good in a funny way, which is the most important thing. So I figure I'll make a few of these totally off-the-cuff, live, raw, unedited, verbal diarrhea, however you want to say it. Hopefully some people will get some fun out of that. So this is going to be the first episode, Double Dare. This is Double Dare on the NES, just a testament to how game show games are and have always been shitty. So obviously we'll play one player, we're going to play on hard, because keep in mind this is a children's game show. Questions tend to be pretty easy, except for the odd one, which totally stumps me, usually because it's about some kind of bizarre subset of American history that a Canadian probably would not have been educated in. We'll go difficult, and then enter our team name here, aka our family name. One of the few good things I have to say about this game is that it's one of the few from this era... Oh god, oh god, how do I go back? Jizz tracks? It's one of the few from this era that actually allows you to input more than, like, four characters for your team name. Must have been a lot of extra space left over on this cartridge for them to store data. And then it's got this weird character select screen where, like, it just asks, it gives you a character and then asks if you'd like a new one. And pretty much all these kids look like either the biggest nerds of all time, which is actually pretty true to form with what actually took place on Double Dare, or they look like they're straight out of a Sega Genesis commercial. Looks like, oh, actually, that looks like the host right there, but let's continue. This is the biggest nerd of all time, but also me as a kid when I was like nine years old. Uh, typical Asian in there. They got a little bit of token racism or racial groups. No black people, though. And I guess that's Arnold from the Magic School Bus. And then there's this kid who is just like totally fucking radical. So of course I'm going to go with him. And I'll get, um, I don't know, Betty from Archie and Archie Comics in there. And then me on the other team. So if you're unfamiliar with the concept of Double Dare, essentially there's physical challenges and trivia. Uh, the physical challenges are the most fun on the show and in the game, even though they don't make any goddamn sense on the game. We'll just, we'll just start it up here, I'll show you. So, everyone is like, we like to play X on Double Dare, but we lost our X. So here, we like to play golf, but we lost our golf ball, so instead we'll have to use eggs. And I'll explain why Tiger Woods poor form lately. First team to get two eggs into the cup wins control. So you can see that I have this meter here, it's speed and angle. And oh my god, the fucking computer is always, always on top of things. So you're like, look at that. Three shots, they got two in. That never happens on the TV show, and I don't think I've ever won a physical challenge in my entire, like, 15 years of playing through this game. But anyway, that one's kind of inconsequential. All they get is control of the, uh, of the playing board right now. So here we are in the trivia section, and every question you get right is worth $10 in this first section of the game. If you don't know the answer, you can go to Dare, which they did, and then the question goes to me for twenty thousand. Sorry, twenty dollars. I've lived in Korea for too long. Uh, and then if I don't know the answer, I can double dare them. Points are worth quadruple. I do know the answer here. It's rich little, but I'm trying to illustrate a point, people, in the comments. Uh, and then it goes back to them for forty dollars. And then if they don't know it, they can do a physical challenge, and whichever team succeeds in the physical challenge will get the money. But of course, they were just—they called my bluff, and they already. Oh wait, it's not rich little. Am I- Oh, not Rich Little, Robin Leach, that's what I meant. I've opened myself up to a whole new type of criticism there. They lost, so the jizz traps get the money. You know, when I first got involved in this kind of bizarre subset of uh, video gaming culture that I'm involved in right now, uh, jizz, tra jizz traps are always the name that I would give to my family whenever possible. A cyborg, that's uh, Cyrus Borgman, right guys? No, it's a robot, that's part human, obviously. Like I said, most of these questions are insultingly easy, or way, way, way too difficult. And actually, when I first got involved in, in this kind of gaming area, Aspartame is an artificial sweetener. Uh, this is the kind of game that I would play. I would do a live stream for like three hours, three times a week, uh, every night. Well, I guess three nights a week. And I would play shitty games and then just comment on them over top. That's how this whole kind of sprawling mess that you see before you got started. Ooh, Sir James Matthew... Very, ooh, I don't know. I'm going to give a dare there. Thank God I put it on the hard mode. If I put it on medium or easy, I just kind of breeze through this. Trivia can sometimes be a little bit boring unless the computer is an idiot and makes idiot responses. But uh, the physical challenges come in handy and they're uh, pretty hilarious. Particularly if you get to the gauntlet at the end. 
shit is just insane. I have never completed the gauntlet. I've been playing this game, you know, like I said, for about 16-odd years now. Um, the other thing is, I've got two kind of funny anecdote anecdotes about uh, Double double Dare. One is, you know, the host Scott Summers was actually a germaphobe, which is kind of ironic, Miss Morissette, because every challenge on the show is predicated on the idea that whether you win or lose, you're just going to get messy as fuck the entire time. Like, you could win and get shaving cream dumped in your hair, and you could lose and get toothpaste shoved up your asshole. Like, everything in that game is just about sliming you constantly. Uh, I believe this is going to be Moscow. Excellent. So that must have been, like, the shittiest job in the world for Scott Summers, but I bet it paid, like, a... He must have lived like Jay-Z for the years that he was running it, which is probably only, like, three years, but it feels like... Uh, it feels like a thousand with my childhood distortion of time. That show was on every day! Uh, the other thing is, you ever wonder, like, second place on Double Dare was pretty shitty, or I shouldn't say second place, but if you finish the gauntlet at the end, you win, like, a car for your family. Ooh, I don't know this at all. Uh, obviously, some of the questions are a little bit dated, considering, you know, this game is a little bit dated, too. Um, yeah, if like, you won the gauntlet, you won a car for your family. A value of, like, what, back then, 1989, like... At least a hundred dollars. Uh, but if you came in second, they were like, You get a Timex watch! So, there was always incentive for you to finish the gauntlet. Although, I guarantee I will not finish the gauntlet here. So, we're gonna actually have a physical challenge. This is one of the first times that I've ever seen them actually involved in the game. Which must have been a serious buzzkill for all those kids who bought this game when it first came out. Oh, head of the class, of course! Alright, here's my physical challenge. It's just me, but if I succeed, I win forty dollars. Spaghetti shoot! We got a big plate of spaghetti, but we need someone to put sauce on the meatball. Look, trying to talk dirty to me. That someone is your partner. You gotta shoot the, shoot your partner from the cannon at the spaghetti. You have 15 seconds to hit the big meatball. Okay, I, <laughs> just another speed and angle game because that's I, I got him, didn't I? I thought that was perfect. Yeah, congratulations! I actually won a physical challenge. I can't believe it. I did not expect that at all. What was up with that funeral dirge that they were playing there as the music? Uh, this trivia, I remember, goes on a lot longer than you'd like it to. And there's two rounds of trivia, and then you get to the gauntlet. What kind of job did Bill Cosby have in his first television show? Uh, CIA agent. What, with the killing and the assassination and the high school teacher? Let's go with... I'm pretty sure he's a doctor, but let's go with Dare. I didn't watch the Cosby show. I ran out of time! I selected Dare! What was the answer? The answer was Dare! He actually was a CIA agent. Oh, man. Uh, never mind. I apologize for my ignorance. So we go back to the crawler team, and sadly, the music has totally ceased at this point. Kangaroo rat is which type of animal? Jumpy lounge lizard. Double dare always coming in with the uh, the topical humor. What the heck is a lounge lizard? Isn't that like a, like a male sleazeball? Or like a Richard Cheese type character? I honestly don't know what a kangaroo rat is. My guess is that it's probably a gopher, but maybe we can get another physical challenge here. Or maybe they'll just guess wrong so I can get some money. Either way, I'm just kind of biding time until our next physical challenge when the computer will inevitably hand me my asshole on a silver platter. Of course it's a gopher. Should've gone with my motto, who dares wins. So finally, round one is over. Oh, I totally forgot about this part. What comes up next is the intermission. So enjoy it, it's pretty cool. Sorry, halftime. So you like that halftime show? Well, you better, because as soon as you press the A button, it's over. And by the A button, I mean the start key, but in any case, it's like, halftime! Why fucking bother if you're just gonna go straight on to the next thing and have a black screen that says halftime? We like to bowl on Double Dare, but we lost all our bowling balls, so you'll have to use cantaloupes. Alright. We like to make jokes on Double Dare, but we forgot our joke book, so you gotta make jokes for us. Okay. So again, the computer, I figure, is just gonna Parker Bomb third me here. Oh god, that was a terrible throw. Maybe if I can get a strike, I can still beat the computer. Are you kidding me? You think the bowling ball stopped before it got to the end? Oh Jesus, I'm getting killed here. The first one should be pretty easy. God damn it! He munsoned me! Of course, the computer is always infallible when it comes to these games. Anyway, if you're getting bored by the trivia, just skip ahead a few minutes in the video because I'd like you to see uh, the next... Oh, well, I actually have to think about this. That would be 10 to the 4, Scott Summers. Or sorry, 10,000. 10 to the 4 is 10,000. This would be 100,000. Um, I was going to say, yeah, skip ahead a few minutes because you're not going to want to miss the gauntlet. And here is just going to be me 
riffing over top of the game and, you know, trying to bring as much of my own humor as I can, that trademark Northern Lion humor that you have grown to love or at least tolerate. Uh, Tennessee, Texas, Transylvania, uh, I only count two. All right, I went out on a limb there. I was going to go with three because I, I figured, you know, everybody probably forgets one. Throat Island. Throat Island. Yes. An island populated entirely by your mother. Mm, uh, four leaf clover. You know, when I was a kid, I thought three leaf clovers were lucky. I thought I was the luckiest motherfucker on earth. There's a whole field of them everywhere. Twenty dollars. Real life dad of Mackenzie Aston played Pugsley's ghoulish father. Well, the only word I understand in that sentence is Pugsley, but I'll take it. But is Mackenzie Aston like the the cousin of Sean Aston? Who knows? Gravitational collapse. Well, it would make sense for that to be a black hole. You know, this would be really fucking unfair if on Double Dare it was just two middle school children against one adult. One adult teacher, no less. But it would feel good, wouldn't it? Don't lie! Scarface was the nickname of, uh... Al Capone. It was the nickname of, uh... Al Pacini. Al Pacini? <laughs> Is that his name? I'm, to I'm totally, uh... Al Pacino, okay. Totally blanked on that one. Um, First Ten Amendments, I don't know. Bill of Rights. Let's dare them. They haven't had a chance to answer in a while, and I'd like to talk. You know, Al Pacino started his career as Scarface. Now he's Scar Career. Ah, that one's gotta go back to the drawing board. Try to submit that one to Conan. Oh, don't you dare double dare me, you assholes. You know what that means? We're gonna be doing a physical challenge. Crawler family, they really lost the name battle. Played against the Viper family last time I played this game. Not a bad last name in the least. Right, here we go with the physical challenge. I think it was the Bill of Rights, right? Yeah. Could have saved myself all this trouble by just answering the question, but no. Let's go with the physical challenge. Oh, well, Double Dare, we want to have sex with your mother, but we forgot our penis, so you're going to have to use this golf club. Launch your partner through the air, have him land on the trampoline. Then he can bounce up and try to grab the flag. Okay, uh, already I can tell I'm probably going to struggle with the controls here. So let's get a speed and an angle to my jump. Alright, Gra grab the flag. Congratulations, I won already. That was... I'm really kind of eating my words on these easy physical challenges, aren't I? That was actually easy as hell. Something tells me that the Crawler family is not going to come back from this deficit. Isn't there some kind of mercy rule that we could just employ right now? What Middle East Canal? Oh, this is a tough one! Suez. Are you sure it's not the Jesus Canal? Anyway, I'm just going to keep... I'm going to bogart the entire board from them. I'm pretty sure even if they answered every question properly for the rest of the game, they could not win. Ooh! Chatta Kissimmee, Kissimmee, Florida, I think. You know, when I go traveling, every town is Kissimmee. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, so clever. And so, so lonely. April 15th, that would be your kids' allowances, right? You know, it's pretty sad. It's multiple choice. There's only three possible answers, and one of them is always a joke answer. So... I mean, it's only 50-50. Why would you ever dare the other team when they get twice the money? You might as well just go for it. Alright, yeah, congratulations. You won the game in fucking fine form. Now we go to the obstacle course, a.k.a. the fiery gauntlet that will never be completed. And it's always whenever you have to climb something that makes it fucking impossible. Because all you do is hammer back and forth on your D-pad as fast as you can. So I can already tell, you see that cliff that was there, that's where I'm going to get fucking stuck. And there's usually some kind of slippery slope as well. That's the one. If I get to that one, I'll be lucky. But I'll do my best, you know, just hammering back and forth on the, uh, on the right and left keys as fast as you can. Alright, go, 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 go! And then, of course, there's always a challenge when you get up here, too, because you have to, like, change controls sometimes to get to this spot. And then you gotta jump in just the right fucking location. You see my Don't Play This of Nickelodeon Guts, I've got a lot of similar complaints from game to game. So we've already used half our time here. And uh, already, with a forearm on my right hand is sore beyond belief. And trust me, that is not an easy task for me to accomplish. Let's see, do we have a slippery slope coming up here? Oh no, we got all the oil! How are we gonna get through that? Turns out, actually, pretty goddamn easily. And of course, up is in jump, even though right and left are move your right and left legs. Okay, this... 
is my goddamn Everest in every way, shape, and form. Just mash the keys blindly and pray. Oh, oh, oh my god, I might actually do it! This is the first time in the night, Double Dare history! He's climbing nothing at the top, it's great! Okay, run! I have no chance at all here, but already this has been a landmark. Oh, go through the slime! Scott Summers is shitting his pants and throwing up at the same time backstage. Oh, okay, jump! I'm actually physically out of breath here! Keep going! Alright, run in the hamster wheel, power it! This is how Chinese Taipei gets their electricity! Ah, oh, time's up! And I think time's pretty much up on this, uh, on this Let's Hate too. but check out the sweet prizes I got. Uh, watch, it looks like it's gonna break in two seconds. Uh, and I'm using air quotations here. Stereo. Pool tables and camping gear. Alright. Well, looking at the time on that watch, it seems to be about a four-leaf clover o'clock. And, uh, that's gonna be the credit sequence, which means this Let's Hate is over. Actually, you know, I had a lot of fun doing this Let's Hate. I think I'm gonna do some more. Hope you guys have had fun watching it as well. And, you know... I'll see you next time.